In the spring of 1905, an American songwriter named Sevilla Martin and her husband were vacationing in upstate New York when they met and struck up a friendship with a local couple, the Doolittles. Mrs. Doolittle was bedridden and had been so for over 20 years. And Mr. Doolittle was crippled and had to propel himself to and from work in a wheelchair in an era that was not nearly so handicap accessible as today. You would imagine that this couple facing such incurable and daunting circumstances would be pessimistic and bitter. But the very opposite was the case. Sevilla Martin and her husband were drawn to the Doolittles because of their boundless energy and their positive outlook on life. After some weeks, Sevilla asked Mrs. Doolittle the secret of her indomitable spirit. Mrs. Doolittle, who along with her husband was a Christian, did not hesitate. She said, because if God's eye is on the sparrow, I know he watches over me. And with that phrase ringing in her memory, Sevilla Martin penned the famous hymn, His Eye is on the Sparrow, a song sung in, in the hun past hundred years at, at all kinds of occasions at Billy Graham crusades and myriad of church worship services and recorded by such diverse singers as Ethel Waters, Marvin Gaye, and Whitney Houston. And in a few minutes, we'll hear it sung by Paul Weisenberger. Now, I mentioned the origin of this hymn, but the muse for this song is really much older than the conversation between Mrs. Doolittle and Sevilla Martin in 1905. Mrs. Doolittle was quoting a verse from the gospel that we just heard, where Jesus was instructing his disciples in preparation for their first missionary journey apart from his physical presence. Jesus was also preparing his followers for the times when they would encounter stiff opposition and even persecution. He knew there would be times of suffering and rejection, and he wanted them to be prepared. Only if they knew to expect such opposition and difficulty would the disciples be able to stand in the face of it without crumbling or without doubting themselves or Jesus. So Jesus gives them the example of the sparrow, a small, rather common bird, which still merits God's attention and concern. If God is attentive to such a tiny creature, surely God will be attentive to the followers of his son, especially when they are confronting difficulties. These words of Jesus echoes the themes that we've heard over and over in today's readings. Jeremiah know what it, knows what it feels like when it seems like the whole world wants to take vengeance on them, on him. But Jeremiah trusts in God, saying, The Lord is with me like a mighty champion, for to you, Lord, I have entrusted my cause. And the psalmist picks up Jeremiah's theme with the same faith and trust, praying, In your great kindness answer me with your help, for bounteous is your kindness. St. Paul, in our second reading, writing to the Romans, tells us why we too should have the trust of Jeremiah and the psalmist. How much more do the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? In the gospel, Jesus assures his disciples that they should never be frightened. And the reason is God's constant, compassionate love. Matthew speaks of two little sparrows sold for a penny. The God who cares for a trivial little bird like the sparrow also cares for you and for me. Even the head, hairs on our heads are counted. So we can be confident of God's care even in the most challenging of times. But it cannot stop there. Why? Because along with this confidence, Jesus gives his disciples and us a task, a commission. This gospel that we've just heard is a continuation of the Matthew section we heard last week, where Jesus was sending his disciples out with, quote, authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and cure every disease and every illness. They were to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Jesus gives them responsibility to bring home the lost, heal the broken, protect the most vulnerable. In other words, to look after the little sparrows which were all around them. And this is our task too. And those sparrows ignored, neglected, 
frightened, can be so close to us. The married couple struggling with fidelity, young people at war with their hormones, those with disabilities longing to be recognized first of all as people, men and women searching for acceptance of their sexual identity, the poor and the disadvantaged who are ashamed and angry, the elderly who live too far away because they've lived too long. All of these need to be seen, to be listened to, to be given the dignity of belonging to God's family. Yes, the God who cares for the sparrow, as Jesus said, and as the old hymn sings, that God cares also for us. And then God sends us out to care for one another in the same tender way. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know. 